All right, sir, we are now live. And so um, welcome everybody. Welcome to our, our second uh, One Image Workflow uh, webinar. Uh, this is a little bit different than the happy hours that you've been to in the past. We are in a webinar. And so the, the webinar means uh, it's just Jeffrey and I that's talking. Um, you can raise a hand or you can go into your dashboard and ask a question. And as Jeffrey is speaking, I'm going to be going through the questions and seeing how I can push them in and ask questions uh, during uh, Jeffrey's presentation. So we we definitely want questions and we want to have a, a great um, uh, sharing uh, uh, information webinar, but you have to be able to type it rather than asking it uh, verbally. And so if you're not familiar with our our presentation for GoToWebinar, uh, you can go up top and instead of going looking at everyone, which you look at our beautiful faces, you can go into hide webcams and by hiding the webcams, you'll then be able to see the images larger. And so when Jeffrey's showing his images in a, little, in a few seconds, I definitely uh, suggest going to hide webcams um, and looking at his images because they, they are beautiful and I want, I want to stare at them and, and put my face as close to the screen as possible so I can and look at them. And so you could do that in a second. Um, <clears throat> let's see, we have a question, what happened to Jeff? I'm not sure, I think Jeff's fine. Uh, <laughs> I think what happened to your hair, Jeffrey? Well, let me get on and, and show, <laughs> let me get into the, the presentation. All right, so let me get into, real quickly, I just want to introduce who we are as a company, um, real quickly and not spend too much because you're not here to see us. So if you're not familiar with who Caption Integration is, in, uh, is, we've been incorporated now for almost 16 years. It's almost 16 years in November uh, and based in Atlanta, Georgia. We are a family owned business right now. Uh, my wife is sitting at the desk right next to me. <clears throat> we have a beautiful and, and strong reputation in the industry. I feel very confident in saying we have one of the best, if not the best. Uh, reputation means a lot to us and, and our relationships that you'll see that we have with our, our clientele really mean a lot. Also, if you're not familiar, we have a software platform uh, called Shotflow. Uh, it is studio production management software that's designed for the corporate brands. Um, if you uh, want to automate metadata in your workflow and automate your studio, then maybe that's something for you in the future, but it's really for the high-end corporate studios. We have been phase one partner of the year uh, for three separate years, two internationally, one uh, uh, for nationally in 2015 in marketing. And I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but I strongly believe in this, that if we're not staying at the top of technology, and in quality, then we're all in the race to the bottom. And I feel that that is a big problem in our industry that we are all racing to try to drop my price or drop my service or drop something in order to save money. And by, by doing so, I think it's just a wrong way to take your business. And so that's not who we are. <clears throat> the bitterness and support quality remains long after the sweetness of low price is forgotten. One of my favorite favorite um, statements and, and, and quotes. And if you don't know me, I love quotes, but I'm not gonna get into that now. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here. And now hopefully, uh, just, just Jeffrey and I, I will tell you when it talks about relationships, um, we had an office in Miami and um, Jeffrey is a photographer in the South and we met probably close to 14 years ago, 15 years ago. And when you meet someone so genuine, you know right away, uh, that you're going to be long-term, not necessarily just clients, but long-term friends. And um, I 100% would state that there's there's something exceptional when you have someone that has so much talent and also is such a wonderful, genuine person to begin with. And those are the people that, and customers of ours that we'd like to support. So with that said, that is exactly why we decided and, and to invite Jeffrey Salter to be our second uh, presenter in our One Image Workflow. Uh, and I'm very proud and happy to introduce Mr. Salter. So Jeffrey, I'm gonna hand over the, the hello to you and then change you as the presenter, okay? Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to uh, thank you, Dave, very much for that very rousting uh, introduction. And uh, I'll try to live up to your, your, your very deep and heavy words. And um, and also, I'd like to thank everyone for giving up their Friday night cocktail to hang out with me. And I'm going to press this button that says show my screen, and I hope you can see me. Beautiful. 
And if you, um, but I can say one thing, you definitely probably will beat a cocktail after this presentation and all the cocktails are on Dave afterwards. <laughs> and if you have a double, it, it's okay, get a triple shot of whatever you, whatever you like. But thank you very much. I, I know your time is very valuable and I, I hope whatever I share will help you in your creative endeavors or at least uh, make you happy, okay? So I'm gonna try to show my screen a little bit there. Here we go. There. Now, just a little bit about myself. Um, I'm an army brat. That means my father was in the military and we traveled quite a bit. And because of that, um, children of soldiers are allowed to use uh, to go on the military base and uh, use the, the lab or the gym or go roller skating. Well, I used to go to the lab on the base, the photography lab, and soldiers would uh, teach me how to shoot pictures. And so from that early, very, uh, very young age, I was, um, thanks to um, you paying your taxes, I was able to get a um, get some education in photography. But I didn't get my first camera until I was about 14. And that was due to one summer I cut a 100 lawns and with the money I bought a camera, my first camera. It was, it was a Canon AE-1. And when I got that camera home to my dad, he, uh, he almost had a heart attack and um, but uh, but now, uh, most recently, uh, before he passed away, he said to me, hey, do you still have that camera? And I says, no, I don't have that camera, but since then, you know I bought many more. So that made him happy that I stayed with this, uh, this art form of photography. But I have worked uh, for, uh, besides uh, being a combat cameraman in the US Navy, I've worked for five newspapers, as well, including the Miami Herald, the New York Times, New York Newsday, the Bergen Record, the Virginia Pilot, and uh, the New York Times as a staffer. And then after I gave up my newspaper career, I went to magazines. And, uh, and I worked for general interest magazines, anywhere from People Magazine to Sports, Illust Sports Illustrated. Well, so that's a few things about me, but um, there's a couple other things you should know. And that is, I've always, um, I've always worn skinny jeans and I've always been analog since the start of photography. But as I said before, I started um, my career in photojournalism working for newspapers. And one of my beats was Haiti. And when I would go to Haiti, I would cover the conflicts, the political upheaval, uh, drought, or whatever was going on, uh, election violence. I always uh, would try to, even though I was covering those stories, I tried to, to create images which were a little bit more uh, uplifting and a little bit more uh, humanizing of people. Is, uh, although I would do the violent stuff too as well. I never focused on that. I focused on moments which uh, shared the humanity of people. It's a story I did about a drought and famine. And this, you know, I didn't really mention this before, but this is a simple shot of a farmer's market. And uh, and I, even though I would cover or shoot um, a common event, I always tried to find something creative, a creative way of expressing what I saw or, or photographing what I've seen in a unique way. Okay, I stopped going to Haiti in the early nine in 1996. I worked there for 10 years as a journalist. And then after the earthquake, uh, which happened about three years ago, I did go back 
and I didn't want to photograph people who were victims. So I photographed them and at one of their sacred places that they go to, and that's called uh, Soto. It's a place where people of all different religions go to just cleanse their spirit. Uh, people believe in uh, voodoo or they believe in Catholicism, or they could be just regular old Christians, but they all go to the sacred waterfalls just to um, renew their spirits uh, once or twice a year. Hey, Jeffrey, I yes, want to sir. mention something because I've been using it a bunch with your images. You can zoom in when you've got an image like this up on your screen. On my laptop, I can use a two finger, finger pinch and I can zoom in to that image and, and it looks, I can just, for so many of these images from Haiti, they're so amazing. It's wonderful to be able to go in and pinch and zoom in to see the images larger. So I just wanted to tell everybody that's listening that, that that's a great option here. Yeah, matter of fact, these images here, um, I shot with a medium format camera. So uh, it's um, photojournalism, but I still wanted to get the, the look and the feel of the medium format camera, medium format digital camera. One of the reasons I switched over from a 35 millimeter digital uh, cameras is because um, there's a little secret back in the film days that um, if someone shot an ass assignment with 35 millimeter and uh, someone else also shot an assignment with medium format, when they were on the light table, usually the ones that shot with the medium format would be the ones ended up in the cover because the format of the shape of the medium format was perfect for a magazine cover. So if you get the cover, you get a lot more money. So I, that's another reason why I switched over to medium format. And also back in the, when they used to pay space rate, which they would also pay you an assignment fee, and they pay you a little bit more on how the picture would be used. If your picture got a double truck on the inside, you get twice the pay. So, and also of medium format, you could, um, a picture would fit perfectly in a double truck of a, of a magazine, and it still maintained the clarity and the beauty. That's perfect. So, but getting back to these, these pictures, um, this is an event, it's a festival, they do it every year, but I try to find significant moments of just beauty. And I always try, the job of a photographer is, uh, to actually bring people into a picture, to make them feel what they're seeing, not just see a picture, but feel like they're there, feel the water hitting their faces, uh, uh, and just feeling the, the water. You can almost hear the water landing in that, that gourd that the young lady's holding in the red dress. And sometimes people at these uh, at Sodo would get, uh, I guess, you know, uh, full of the spirit, you would say, and they would uh, need to be held down because they would shake or they'd sing or they just express themselves very vividly. And it's multi generational. Grandmas bring their grandkids. Uh, but it's truly uh, a divine event and uh, you feel the power of, you can just feel the power and the energy of these people and the, the divinity at this waterfall. Now, as I said, I was working at five newspapers, and then, um, but while I was at the newspaper, I always thought that I wanted to be a magazine photographer. So I would use lighting on my assignments. And I, I'm a big uh, believer of uh, beginning with the end in mind. So 
my uh, so my approach to what I do is not necessary for what the, the the first time usage. You know, I want to my pictures or whatever I do to have a another life. I guess you call it legs. So by using lighting in my newspaper assignments, um, I was able to get uh, magazine assignments uh, part time, and then eventually I built up enough clients to go full time as a magazine and advertising photographer. So one of my clients. Uh, was Sports Illustrated Magazine. Now, they didn't necessarily hire me because um, my knowledge of sports, because to be honest <laughs> with you, I, I, I like paddle boarding and I like kayaking and I do a little bit of CrossFit, but uh, I don't know anything really about <laughs> the game. I think they, they hired me because they needed someone to be able to hang out and be comfortable with the athletes and also I didn't really talk to the athletes about their games I just talked to them about their sneaker or, or their kids or something like that so I'm going to show you tonight a lot of my sports illustrated work um, so here we're going to let's get started okay yeah so this is a piece I did uh, with Dwight Howard so uh, a lot of times, um, I very rarely, rarely, well, I never get sent to the games. I usually get sent to the athlete's home or I go to the club with them or whatever, but I do things off the field. So I try to illuminate them who they are off the field. And in this case, we went to his house and also um, I went to his school where he his high school he goes to he went to a high school a Christian's high school in Atlanta and we went back to his high school and shot some pictures of him at his high school as well as his home Just having fun. I just, uh, you know, I'd love bringing other people into the pictures. And these kids were like really, they were thrilled to hang out with him. So, so I think these kind of pictures kind of like uh, tell other, uh, give you another humanize the athletes well, not just think of them as just, you know, on the, on the court, you know, just think of them as real people as well. Well, they are real people, you know that, but you know what I mean. We know. We know what you mean. And here is uh, more. Like I said, I'm going to show you a lot of Sports Illustrated work tonight. This is a video. Of That was with uh, Julio Jones, and that was for the cover of Sports Illustrated. Awesome. And here are some of the uh, portraits of him. I 
I'm a, a big user of light. I'm a heavy lighter, meaning I use lights. I use a lot of lights and I use them uh, to sculpt out a picture, sculpt out the person, meaning I want to create layers of depth and meaning in my images. So generally, wherever you see a highlight is a light. But there's a balance. You know, you don't want to get too seduced by the lighting. You still need to find some time to, to bring out the moments with your subject. You got to make that connection so they'll give you some love. They'll give you something inside of them that they want to say. And I guess I use the lighting as, I guess, uh, just as a way, like I said before, to bring some three-dimensionality to the picture. You know, I like people to be able to touch the picture and feel like they're there. Well, one thing about me when, uh, when I'm on set, I, I usually involve everyone. Everyone helps me to do a project. And um, a couple of years ago, I think, no, last year, I was uh, on vacation in Italy and I got a call from Sports Illustrated and they said, hey, Jeff, what are you doing? I says, I'm on vacation. And they says, well, how about this? Uh, can you go to Wimbledon to photograph a tennis player? And I says, okay, I'll go to Wimbledon to photograph a tennis player, but I don't have anything. I just have my medium format camera. And they said, we'll just make it happen. So I uh, have a good friend in London who's a magazine uh, advertising photographer named Julian Calvary. And I called him and he gave me the name of his producer. And I was on, while I was in Venice on a gondola, I pretty much well set up this shoot with my cell phone. And uh, I'm very thankful that uh, I had a great producer to put it all together. Because one of the things we needed was the ability to have um, two sets at one time. So we need a huge studio in Wimbledon and a relatively short period of time. But anyway, this is the first setup. And basically we just, uh, this is my crew who has helped me get this right. And I don't know Jeff. who that guy is. <laughs> Jeffrey, yes? are you? Are you measuring the light with a light meter for your ratios? Uh, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. But what I do is I kind of like use one light at a time and I build up things. Mm -hmm. I build up. And from this next picture, you'll see, oh, and there's the picture. The tennis player. That's just a tennis yeah, player. That's the tennis yeah. player, Serena yeah. Williams. Uh-huh. Yeah. The world's best. But there's more to this picture than that. She uh, was actually a did this between practices and she had injured herself during practice and before she came to the shoot she had to get go to her doctor and she was like really on some pain medications but she was able to do the shoot and uh and, and gave us gave us some lots of good time and lots of good energy true a true professional but one thing else about her is that i photographed her before and that that's helped a lot because I've actually been in her house in my, in uh, Fort Lauderdale, and I did a story about her closet. So not only was I in her house, I was in her closet. You bet. So I, I know a lot about her. <laughs> so anyway, so and that's the picture that ran on Sports Illustrated cover. And that's an inside picture we did. And then I always try to do a portrait. Jeffrey, do you keep track of how many uh, covers you've had? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> I just, I'm just happy to get them. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I don't know, I'd say maybe about, uh, I don't know, maybe about 40, I think, something like that. But I've been working for them a long time. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, uh, it's not just me, it's a very, uh, it's team, it's a team. The whole village to help me produce my certain certain images. Sometimes it's just me and the athlete, other times it's, I need a lot of help. 
And as you can see, I used lots of lights and I used lots of modifiers to sculpt the image I want to create. Yeah, it's like a freaking army there. <laughs> that's a lot. That's that's a big production crew. Yeah, a lot. A lot. It's a lot. And you, there's a lot of people, you have to keep a balance on the set too. Because if you make people, if you keep, if everybody feels that their opinion is is valued or the input is valued, it they'll tell you if something is not working, if the light's not working or, or the, something is off with the shoot they'll you know they'll, they'll they won't feel like they that they can't tell me that hey jeff this is not happening which i gladly accept that okay and this is a bit of a change up this was shot actually um uh right after covid and where the um teams weren't playing so the magazine wanted to do some different type of stories different type of photo essays so here i was commissioned by marguerite scrope the picture editor to just do some body studies muscle studies of the athletes And I'm sorry, this is this is Derek Henry from the Tennessee Titans. Then I also did uh, Caleb Dressel, who was with the uh, uh, Olympian, two-time swimming Olympian, champion, 13-time world champion swimmer as well. So that's uh, one of the reasons why I use um, medium format is so I so I can capture the detail, the subtle shades in skin. Again, you know, like I said, I use a lot of lights, but I don't. I try not to make the light the story. I try to use a light in a way that it helps tell a story. Okay, and then here are some behind the scenes of my shoot with Derek. And this is just an iPhone shot of him when he first uh, came to the set. Um, he had just had a new baby, but he gave up his time to come to the shoot. And I'll show you another video real quick. Yeah, bring more turkey. Yeah, 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 no. Good. Uh oh, I don't know why that stopped so soon. Yeah, no. Okay, I guess that's it. That's it. But as you can see, um, I use a lot of, let's see, let's see it from another angle too. Let me show it to you from another angle. There. Okay. You probably see a mess there, but it's <laughs> it's a mess with a sense of purpose. And that is and the reason is is that I like to use different textures to bounce light in. Like that table at the bottom there was it is a nice little matted silver and it opens up the shadows just right. And then I use a lot of flags on my lights to kind of shape them even more. In this case, I was using a lot of strip banks. And then also, sometimes I'd use an open head just to pepper the light up a little bit. 
like in the middle of the frame, there's a strobe that's wrapped in some white diffusion. That's just an open head. And that's just, it kind of rakes across the skin a bit, just a little bit. And um, not, of course, not everything set on full power. I just, the light, each light is set at like a different, a different level to get, uh, to, to do a certain effect on the image. And beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Now, um, African American skin looks tends to look better when you, it's when it's more flat. I know, like the magazine ran the image poppy and contrasty, but I don't. That's not really my style. But I think the magazine was going for that look. But to me, I prefer skin a little bit uh, more uh, subtle, muted, and just brings out more textures and nuance in the image. So I think at this point, we're going to go over to uh, Capture One, and I'm going to show you uh, the processing and what I did to the image there in that program, OK? So just give me a second to switch over there. And if you have any questions, feel free to, to pitch in too, okay? Now, after I return to my office and I'm able to um, in, uh, move the session move the photos over from my laptop to my desktop, the first thing I like to do is I add metadata. And with Capture One, you can add, I use what they call a style for metadata. There. I would select like Editorial 2020, and that would give me the metadata for the image which would be here. And it's very basic, just my name and my contact and my copyright. And then once I do that, I, um, I type in and I add in the actual caption information, who the person is and so on and so forth. And then at this point, I do, I select all the image, all the images, and then I copy and paste them. So the all I copy and paste the metadata. So all the images have the same metadata. I'm not going to do that now because that'll take a bit of time. But what I do next is I do what they call a one-star edit, and I send it out to the magazine. Now, Sports Illustrated is a a weekly magazine, so they have um, their deadlines are really tight. So I do my edits. Some pictures I give one star if I kind of like them. Some uh, three stars if I really like them. And in this case, there's 150 pictures. And then I export these pictures low res and I send them to the editor. And the editor gives me a list of images that she likes or they like. And so you had 150 and then I images. Get the, that were a one star or yeah. above. Yeah, mm -hmm. one star or above. Mm -hmm. Then I then when they send me the select list, I um, I send them the selects. In this case, they decide they wanted 63 pictures for selects. And then at that point, I send them a raw file, and then they decide on what kind of adjustments they really like. Now, sometimes we are, in, I, I can do what they call, uh, I do global adjustments to that raw file, and I get it to where I like it, and then I'll go ahead and I'll send it out. But when they give me 63 pictures, I don't really 
do them all. I just do my favorite images, or I do global image, global adjustments to all of them. But some of the images that I really like, I do a little bit more, a deeper dive. So in this job, okay. you, sent, then, so, you sent them 63 RAWs for them to choose. Yes, I send them 63 RAWs for them to kind of use or manipulate mm -hmm. because sometimes they uh, it goes to another layer of editing. And I just send them RAWs because otherwise they're going to keep calling me back. Mm -hmm. But before I send them a RAW, I make sure that my metadata is in there. And I make sure that uh, the images have a general look that I'm going for a general tone, a general mood that sure. I'm going for. Like I may add a little vignetting to the image to, to close it down, to, to, to focus the eye a little bit on the subject. Okay, so eventually, you know, they, they're going to do what they want to do <laughs> for their image. But then I like to go back to the images and do them the way I like them. Jeffrey, so I selected, yes? For, for jobs for Sports Illustrated, when you were shooting, shooting Serena or you're shooting Derek, did they say, all right, Serena, we need these four images, one with, you know, with this and one with that. How much production were you able to, to do with Derek Henry with, with the black and white? Did they give you, how much direction did they give you and how much is you pre-planning on your end? Well, when you're dealing with someone at Serena's caliber, you, you pretty much have to have uh, run her ideas by her. Uh -huh. You run the <laughs> ideas by her, and, mm -hmm. you know, and she chooses the idea that she likes, that she's willing to do. No, that's great. You know, and she was willing to put her leg up on that column. So and she liked that because she, she thought it showed her flexibility and, and also made her look beautiful. So she would do so, that. You've got to be prepared with multiple ideas then ahead of time and then and hope which one they're going to choose. Yes. Hmm. Yes. But, you know, but it's what, you know, and, and, you know, and also sometimes you have 12 minutes, sometimes you have an hour, you know, and sometimes uh, there's other things that happen that life happens. And so you just got to be prepared and be flexible, you know, but on a shoot that big, you know, where they're flying you to Wimbledon, you just kind of over prepare, you, uh, you rent as much equipment as you want, you build out two sets at one time, you hire a team of people to help you. You know, because it's a one-time shot, one-time deal. Well, something smaller like uh, with my the muscle essay, like with Derek Henry or Caleb, uh, it's pretty much uh, just telling the players that hey, we want to show how buff you are. We want to show your muscles, and they were, you know, they got on board with that pretty pretty quickly because they're proud of their bodies. They're proud of what they do. You know, they're proud of their machine, their body. So. Once I um, once I have time to go back and edit the pictures the way I really like them, what I like to first thing I do is I like to I don't know if you can see my screen very well, but I like to desaturate my images. I see I don't see it when you saturate it how it gets too murky and red. Most of the time I always desaturate my images over ever so slightly. And then I open up the shadows just to give me kind of a base to start from. And then I also, what I do is I do the diffraction and I do a little bit of chromatic aberration. And I also sharpen ever so slightly, do like a soft image sharpening one, and I reduce the noise luminance down. Because the pre the um, preset is usually that, 50, 50, 50. But I like to go down a bit because it's not usually in the control environment, the way I shoot, there's not a lot of diffraction, not a lot of things happening, not a lot of noise because I'm controlling everything. OK, once I get a nice flat foul, I go under the window here, the dropper. And I go to um, 
clone variant. And I make a clone of the image. And that's what I work on, the clone. And it's it's still the raw file, but it's like a, it's just a clone and it actually doesn't even add more to your, uh, to, it doesn't add, it doesn't create a new file, it just creates a clone. A of second the set of sidecars, yep. Yeah, a second set of sidecars. So you're not adding, you're not increasing the amount of, uh, you don't need a bigger hard drive or anything if you're going to work this way. I just like working this way. So once I do that, I go to a different screen. I do, I change my workspace to a full screen mode. Yeah. We only see one of your screens. Now you're going to dual monitors, right? right. Okay. Right. Now I have to go to dual monitors, which is there. Great. Now we see both monitors. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yep. So now you should be able to see two monitors. So on the left is my, just my image. And then on the right, I have my tools again and layers. I want to remind everyone that you can go and zoom in on the right hand side if you want to look at the settings. And so we're looking at uh, my screen only says about 50% of the resolution of, of GoToMeeting. You can zoom in 100% and see and, and really see those well if you are interested. So not to go too deep, but what I would do next is I select the background and I change the, oh, there's a floating, there's a window missing. Let me get it. There. Yeah, I enable black and white. And then with this tool, you can also, uh, you know, change the colors a little bit subtly by adjusting it. Oh, can you show us? It was beautiful liking. when when you were changing the channels. It really showed the skin tone, even though it's black and white. It really showed it change a lot when you were shifting them earlier. Because you know, like I said, I don't, um, I don't do, I don't do like that. I don't do, I don't like those kind of things for, for. Uh, the way I photograph African American skin. I mean, this is kind of cool if you're going for that look, but I'm more of a, I, I like softer tones in my images. And also, I think you can see the muscles better, the scarring, and just the texture of the skin better that way. So once I set my background to a black and white I like, then I do a create another layer. You create a layer by pressing this button here and it gives you a layer and you rename it. In this case, I create a layer called black and white. And in this layer, I use the user styles. And the style I like is called matte 16. And it even flattens out the image more and it gives it like a more of a desaturated look to the image. So I apply that, but there's other styles that you can apply as well. And you can get these styles at um, from phase one or, or from David Capture Integration. There's people who will make you a style or you can make a style yourself. But anyway, I that's the style I like for my for that look. Just as a as a point to to build upon a starting point. Next step is a local dodge. Now you see the red mask there off. That is from the brush. See? So you can see what you're doing when you paint in a mask. In this particular case, I am dodging, I'm lightening up, I'm opening up the shadows and opening up the shadows about 25% on this particular image. There, 
you can close it down. But I, again, I'm opening up the shadows a bit. But I'm not just opening up the shadows. What I'm doing is building. Uh, You're enhancing I'm, sculpting. You're sculpting. I'm sculpting mm -hmm. and bringing out the muscles. I'm not like dodging a shadow. I'm dodging the area between the highlight in the shadow. And so it's a more uh, smoother tone, a more a graduated look, tonal look to the image. And then the, my next step is I do a burn. I darken certain highlights or I darken areas to uh, just bring out more shape and texture of the person. No, oh, that sorry about that. You know why I did that? Excuse me. You're good. Yeah. So here I didn't need to do a lot of burning, but I just thought that area there just needed a little bit of bringing down. Just subtle. Just a little subtle burn. The next step will be a curve. Again, um, you create a mask and then you apply the adjustment. Here I applied a curve to the overall image to give it a little bit more, a little bit more pop, but not so uh, uh, contrasty as just using the preset because I, that's why I use the, the local dodge and the burn just to open up those layers. Next step would be a vignette. And just, what that does is just help me, help focus your eye to the center of the image. And the final step for this image would be a, a cleanup which would be removing, you know, spots on the sensor. Okay. Now I, after I do this and yet, yes, there's more, I output this image to, I output it as a TIFF, 16 mega, 16 bit TIFF. To, and, and I output it, uh oh, wow, that's rude. Sorry about that. There. Sorry about that. I You're output fine. it as a tip to Photoshop. There. And then in Photoshop, I continue the work. Oh, that's not Photoshop. There it goes. There. In Photoshop, I continue working on the image more. In this particular case, I make a background copy and then I do a cleanup layer. And it, to me, it really didn't need much cleanup, but there were some spots that just kind of distracted from me, so I took them off. I cloned them out with the with the uh, healing tool. Now I don't do a lot of fancy uh, uh, composites with my imagery. When I need to do that kind of stuff, I send it out to someone who does it all the time. But I just try to do things that feel good to my eye when I have a portrait and that type of thing. And this is what it looks like. Yeah. There you go. So I don't know if Dave's got any questions. How are we doing, Dave? Oh, and if, does anyone have more questions? Um, I've I've pretty much gone through the questions that I had as they've come up. Um, we are now okay. at 
about, uh, we have about 20 minutes left if you wanted to show that second image. Um, oh, awesome. That you're working on. Good. So we have some extra time, but we are at, we're Excellent. about a, yeah, an hour and five minutes of, of, uh, of uh, 90 minutes, so we're good. Okay. Now we're going to go back to capture one. There. And command B. And then I, this is a portrait I really like a lot. Again, like I said before, the first thing I do is I just simply desaturate the image a bit. And I open up the shadows. Just, if anything, just to flatten it out a little bit. And in this case, I did went ahead and I add some vignetting to the base image. Just a bit. Jeffrey, mm -hmm. do you use autofocus yes. and, re and recompose to use uh, on your XF camera? Yes, I do. You do. And, and so when it came, when it started, did it help you with nailing your focus in these kind of situations? Well, I have the focus assist on 100%. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this case, remember, I'm in a studio, so I had modeling lights. Yeah. And uh, so I was able to get enough contrast with that. I mean, sometimes the autofocus can be thrown off a little bit, but, uh, well, with this particular lens, the 150 is really, really, it's the 150 blue ring lens, mm -hmm. and uh, it really holds focus really well. It's a crisp, it's amazing, amazing piece of glass. Can you zoom in, zoom in and show us the detail? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's at five six, and uh, just on the ridge. Right. My my thing my my weakness is that I I like to shoot at like five six or four, but you got to remember with medium format, five six on medium format it's actually like f four <laughs> on thirty five. Uh -huh. Yep. So if you shoot at two eight on medium format, you're shooting like at one four. So you really have to shoot quite a few frames to try to nail the focus. But I uh, yesterday I was with my friend, um, Keith Major, he does uh, rappers and stuff, and he was shooting F8, F11, that type of thing. Uh, <laughs> but I, I don't really shoot like that. I shoot more uh, I shoot more for shadow depth of field. I probably shouldn't. I probably just go ahead and go to F8, but I like to, um, I like just the, the, the drop off from uh, <clears throat> using wider uh -huh. aperture. Sure. Okay, so once I get the, the base image done, again, I go up and I do I make a another clone variant, not a new variant, a clone variant of the image. And there's the clone. There. And I go to the other screen over here. And I create layers like we did before. Take the background, turn the background to a base black and white image. Then I add another black, another layer of black and white. My next step is I dodge again. And here, <clears throat> I didn't do a lot of dodging, but I do did want to emphasize the hair a bit. I thought the hair was getting lost, so I did open up the hair a little bit, open up under the eyes a little bit, and did a little work on the tattoos a bit, on the dodge. And then next layer was a burn, which just to darken up the tattoos a bit. Now I know there's like retouchers who can like, they there's a, in Photoshop or even Capture One, there's a way of just bringing out just the tattoo, but I don't really know how to do that very well, so I can do what I have to do, what I know how to do, and I just burnt over the, I just took a small brush, 
made it very, very tiny, and then I just painted over what I wanted to go black in the in the uh, <clears throat> in the image. Final step for this image is an overall curves adjustment. Then, like we did before, I output the image through, go here and I output it as a TIFF, 16-bit TIFF. Uh, even if I'm going to eventually send an image as a, a JPEG, I always keep the, the resolution as high, as high as possible, because it's, it's easier to, uh, to go down in quality and then it goes up in quality. So, so like I said, it just goes back to my philosophy of beginning of beginning with the end in mind. So hopefully maybe one day somebody might really like this shot and end up in a museum someplace um, and uh, they want to play it huge. So I output the image as a TIFF to Photoshop. <clears throat> Here we go. And in Photoshop, this image needed a bit of more work to it. <clears throat> there. I like to feather, I like to uh, go back and forth from the white background to gray, just to kind of see what's happening with the tones. Because it looks different when it's on a gray background than it is a white background. So <clears throat> I hope you can see both screens here. As you can see, I do a lot of I did a lot of work on this particular image. Starting with a cleanup, some color. And then some dodging, then more burning, <clears throat> for instance, there. That's a dodge area. And again, I'm still working on the hair. I still wasn't quite happy with the hair. I wanted to bring it out just ever so subtly. And then I did a little bit, no, I didn't do much burning there. But then I tried to work on the hair even more. It's just, the hair was just like my nemesis. I couldn't get the hair right. So I kept doing, kept making dodging layers with mask. I even sharpened the hair a wee bit, just a wee bit. And then finally, I did a curves layer and I don't know, I guess every time I look at this image, I I change the curve in the final picture a little bit. I may do that. I don't know, I just, I don't know what I want to quite bring out, but I do, like I said, I do believe in shooting darker skins flatter just to show the detail. So I don't want it to be too flat that the image is boring, I want it to be just about right. And I could say thank God for, for layers hmm. because I can always go back to the image. Do the athletes ever reach yeah. back out to you uh, and, and tell you? Oh yeah, they'll, they'll text me. They'll text me and, and whatnot, or they'll call me or, or just say, hey, we love that image, can we use mm -hmm. it? Usually like sometimes um, if, if, they, if, they, uh, if they're giving me grief at the shoot, and not understanding what I'm doing <laughs> after they see the pictures, they'll say, "Wow, we love that picture." You know, can I have it? Can I have it? Uh -huh. You know. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> so it's 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 getting back to um, me and not really being a sports photographer. I just try to be a human being with these guys and uh, and not focus on their their great feats of of, of athleticism. Uh -huh. You know, they're they're great athletes, man. They're and on the field, but the kind of images I'm trying to produce is also show that power that they have, but also uh, humanize them, you know, in a way and show 
people a different side of them, a different moment, you know? So you were talking earlier about compensation, about placement of images and such uh, for Sports Illustrated. It doesn't matter where the images appear uh, for you. I mean, if you were not shooting the cover and all of a sudden they love the image and it's going on the cover, would they compensate you more? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So I always try to shoot for the cover. <laughs> I always leave a little space at the top. But usually they tell you, tell me ahead of time if it's going to be a cover image. Really? Yeah. They tell me ahead of time. So let me try something. Uh, let me just show everyone the image now, just the image by itself. So we're going to go just to the main screen there. I think you can only see one screen now. But there we go. Go back to there. That's a beautiful image. Thanks. It's um Yeah. And I saw his drip like that. I says, "Oh, this is this is what I want to do." Well, I think I probably uh, how are we in time? I think I can probably yeah. take a few questions. To people have them? I've been I've been asking them at, intermittently uh, one question I haven't asked you that they asked is uh, but I did answer it some of them I answered just myself uh, they, one said uh, you know which which media format camera are you sh using today and I gave them a little history but if you wanted to give a little history of wh where you've been before and where you are now um, and why well I used to my first medium format camera was the IQ um, IQ 260 no, IQ 160 day? No, IQ. Didn't you have a P series before have? that? When you shot huh? when you shot the cover of Cigar Magazine, um, you remember? Uh, and then when you first started meeting format with us, I thought it was a P30, wasn't it? It was a P series. Uh, it was a P series, and I don't remember which one. I don't remember either. But no. I started off with that, and then uh, here I just decided to put this image up too, just for kicks. <laughs> yeah. Look at those guns. <laughs> I know, I was scaring him. Double barrel. <laughs> yeah, I scared him. He says, oh. But it's funny, when you do these shoots, you have to make the athletes uh, do push-ups. <laughs> so, you know, I'm sitting here with my little, you know, a stranger, and I'm sitting here telling a multi-million dollar athlete to jump on the ground and give me, hit me, give me 25 push-ups. And they just do it. It's so funny, you know. It's not funny, but it's it's cool that you know that you know you get to tell these guys you get to be their coach for like 12 minutes or an hour, and and they trust you because you know you got to get to get the muscles to show you you have to have them actually do uh -huh. uh, an exercise. You can't just say oh flex. You got to get the the blood pumping. Sure, there yeah. there isn't an athlete but that you, you to, that you. Uh, Go hmm? ahead. There isn't an athlete that you'd yeah, like so to shoot I, that you I haven't. Two, pardon me, David? There isn't an athlete that you'd like to shoot that you haven't, is there? Uh, you know, I got asked that person, I got to ask that question before, and I think the person I probably, I mean, not an athlete, but just in general, the person I wish I had been able to shoot a portrait of was Nelson Mandela. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the guy. But as mm -hmm. far as athletes, uh, you know what? I love them all. Next week, I'm going to do a story about uh, kids who whose lives have been interrupted by they can't they can't go do sports mm -hmm. because of the COVID stuff. So that's going to be a nice essay. And uh, so uh, I try to I try to be in the moment on my photo shoots, and I enjoy the person who's in front of me at the time. You know, because everyone's a value to me. Everybody is been blessed to be born on this planet and uh, some people got bigger guns and some people got bigger minds some people got bigger hearts but they're all the same in front of me you know just all worthy of 
getting a great portrait taken of them, you know. They're awesome, so. Jeffrey Salter. But awesome. yeah, I didn't answer your last question really quickly. I've had three medium format cameras. Uh, I think the IQ 160, then the IQ, no, P something, one of the P series, and then I went P, to the 260. P, yeah, mm -hmm. P40, and now 260. I have, mm -hmm. And now I have the IQ 3 100. Mm -hmm. And I and I'm rocking that camera at the moment. So Cameron Cameron Davidson wants to know if 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 barbecue is either pork or beef. <laughs> is it acceptable to have beef barbecue? And this is a big running thing with him and I. I say you absolutely have beef in your barbecue, and he tells me no, it has to be pork. And so well, it depends um, on if, how to how devout you are but <laughs> i did have bacon i did have some bacon just morning so <laughs> okay. but yeah it's it has to be um memphis has the best barbecue memphis has the best barbecue yeah i think uh there's a place right up the street from graceland they have great pork great great barbecue mm -hmm. omaha right. has the best beef Omaha, Nebraska. <laughs> when you're sending the raws to Sports Illustrated, um, are they opening them in Capture One uh, and developing them in, in Capture One? Yes, they, they better be. <laughs> now things have changed a lot. You know, I mean, I mean, candidly speaking, I mean, back in the day, um, Time Life Labs. I guess most photographers on the on the webinar know this. Used to be the one of the best labs in the world. And when we were shooting film, the most important person to know is an airline pilot or someone about to get on a flight. Because we would shoot the film and go to the airport and have to hand the film off to someone. Yeah. <laughs> and the film would arrive, someone going to New York, and the film would arrive and a motorcycle carrier, a guy on a motorcycle would pick up the film and just take it directly to Time Life Lab. And they would just do what they do, and that was a great lab. Awesome. But now it's it's changed a lot since they got new new uh, new management and so on and so forth. So, but they seem to still be uh, doing the, the great stuff to produce some nice images. At least I, I haven't been. Uh, they 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 seem to uh, stay by what I the image the the tonal adjustments I make. Great. Well. We are, we are right there at time. Uh, Jeffrey, I can't say that the people in the comments have said lots of wonderful, incredible things on, on the side uh, and, and wh how much they've enjoyed it. And, and I can't tell you enough uh, how proud we are to have you as our customer, but also as a friend. So thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for uh, showing us and sharing your images with us. All right, great. And Get your, get your drinks now. <laughs> All right. It's time for a drink. All right, Jeffrey thank and everybody everyone. else. Everyone who's, who's attended, thank you very much for attending. And we will send this link out if you'd like to watch it or forward it uh, to someone else that, that hasn't seen it. So, again, thank you very much. Thank you, Jeffrey Salter. And everyone have a great night. Be safe. All right. Good night. Peace out. Peace out.